さっきの狩りで相手した魔法少女どれも敵ではなかった。Uh, lady, why is there a cat and dog mixed in with this pile? We open this week with our main trio of villainesses, take note of that, being invited back to their HQ. All the while, Kiwi was acting about as mature as her VA, so yeah, no discrepancy there. At the same time, we were getting some follow up with Sayo's issues from the last episode. You just had to go with those particular descriptors, didn't you? Granted, she was doing the right thing by asking her friends to help retrain her, which makes sense. Unless she's also the type who gets turned on by her friends being corrupt, which isn't out of the realm of possibility with this chick. Meanwhile, Utena and Cole met with the actual founders of their little evil organization. This included Loku Wuzika, who we would see more later in the episode, Leopard Bloom, aka Jigsan, aka the girl who really should have been the sixth ranger of the Delicious Party team, Sister Gigante, the naughty nine with all of the underboob. Eh, personally, I prefer the sexy bug bell. Don't look at me like that. And the big boss lady herself, Lord Enormi. Of course, she and her little group were actually trying to defeat all the magical girls to ensure that they'd be able to take over the world and all that stuff. Well, better than being Greta Thunberg as a moth lady. That said, if it wasn't already obvious enough, Venelita had their own agendas and thus had been raising Gutenna's trio to go against their plans. Uh, technically, aren't you all the star screams in this scenario, considering that you're the underlings and all that? I mean, just saying, it's always cooler to be the screamer rather than the Megs, just, you know. Then again, the girl who's obsessed with Maho Shoujo and was dragged into this whole world domination thing likely was always going to refuse. <laughs> Also, I heard that at your last villainous job, you were orzing like there was no tomorrow when things didn't go exactly your way. But of course, her friends also joined her, especially Kiwi, after she was called a Null Star, which again would be a significant plot point for later. For now though, Lord tried to get her 17-year-old nun friend to dispose of the traitors. Fortunately, Koisu managed to pull a free run and trap her in her dollhouse with Utena and Kiwi following in to double tap her. However, let's not forget this is a show where everyone's names kind of hint at something. In this case, Gigante is Greek for... Really? A giantess? I mean, come on, who's actually into that ultra fetishy stuff? There's this movie on its own. However, rather than dying the greatest death possible, the trio managed to escape thanks to Kiwi's bombs, though Utena took the brunt of the explosion for her friend in a heartwarming moment that later became slight nightmare fuel. <laughs> Girl, are you by any chance related to this walking steroid? Actually, remember those stars for a little later, maybe. But yeah, as she'd even reaffirmed while recovering at a hospital, Utena was fully intent on taking down Lord for defeating those other magical girls. Which, on paper, might sound a little hypocritical for her, but let's not forget that she's only really playing the part of a villainess, and more wants to see magical girls become stronger through the challenges she put them through. She had absolutely no intention of actually offing them, just to do all kinds of other really bad things to them. Okay, maybe there is a little bit of hypocrisy, but let's not get into the semantics. She also called on to Venelita actively be against Lord's intentions, with them purposely keeping Utena's actions and even secret identities on the down low. Interesting developments, to say the least. Anyway, the second half of the episode would focus more on Kiwi and Koisu, much to the latter's dismay. <laughs> Bitch, please. Granted, they did get along well enough that somehow Kiwi managed to translate the quiet little one's hand gestures. However, things wouldn't stay quiet as Local had arrived to exterminate them and freak everyone out with her jiggle physics. Like yeah, I get that Enermita are recognizable threats, but I think more people, especially guys, would more likely just stare at this chick. And appropriately, her opposite, in terms of blue dress code, wanted to fight her, but Koisu wisely tried to stop her from just jumping in with no plan. Hey. <laughs> Can we all just agree that this no pantser is a treasure? 
That said, Loco didn't see her as much of a threat based on her lack of stars, as in a nice subtle bit of world building that we've been seeing throughout this whole show, stars on an Intermita's body kind of represented their power levels, hence why characters with OP abilities like Koisu and Gigante had 3, and Lord had 4. Hey, I'll happily take the 0 star Angry Mayu over most 4 stars any day because at least he's a total bro. Same kind of applied to Kiwi for Utena, just replace bro with sex maniac. However, even her knockoff Tiro finale wasn't enough to hold back Loco's music based attacks because, get it, Loco Musica, it's Spanish for crazy music, eh? Well, unfortunately, she wasn't really crazy, just delusional, as after Koizu managed to join the fight, Loku revealed her true intentions. And to make things even cringier, she started to sing in, yeah, I'm not gonna play anything, both to avoid copyright and to save y'all's ears. I mean, it certainly wasn't the worst singing I've ever heard, especially in anime, but the lyrics, which as the subtitles even credited, were by Loco and were even more self-indulgent than Lizzo at a buffet. <laughs> yeah, don't quit your day job as the rabbit of the Zodiac. Kiwi shared in my feelings, which Loco didn't take so well, at first just making things awkward when they're crying, and then went into actually effective attacks, not just ones that make everyone's skin crawl. However, it also made it easier for them to escape using a clever combination of Koisu's dolls and Kiwi's flashbangs. The two then had, honestly, one of the most wholesome scenes in this freaking show, with Kiwi offering to replace the dolls, and again, I just love that she's the only one who seems to understand Koisu's gestures. With that, the episode ended with Lord giving Loco the Persia Testarossa treatment, just with less clothes. This episode matched as a really effective shakeup for this little show. But we also managed to learn about how their power levels kind of work, and established that there was no honor among these thieves and their many agendas. I also found this to be one of the funniest episodes because I do enjoy myself a little bit of that good, dry, cringe humor. When it comes to villain factions, some of the most memorable moments from them actually come from their infighting. It's why to this day, Starscream, both in and out of Transformers, remains such an endearing character archetype. And while Utena is far from a sniveling coward with delusions of grandeur, she does have her own kind of honorable, yet still very warped goals of wanting to bring out the best in Magical Girls, so of course she'd be against the pure Saturday morning villain in Lord. Not that such traits necessarily make the boss lady uninteresting, as her over-the-top theatrics and try-hard villainy makes for some good laughs. Yes, obviously, she's still a threat, as established through the star system that we got in this episode, and what she did to Loco at the end of it. But it is also hilarious that she seems to speak on just one volume that no one can really take all that seriously. Meanwhile, the rest of her direct flunkies are a lot of fun. Gigante brought all of the cheesecake, and Loco provided honestly one of my favorite fights of the series so far. As not only was the animation throughout this episode far more consistent than last week, but I honestly can't stop laughing at points. I don't know, I just really like comedy in my magical girl battles, and Kiwi and Koryu's reactions to her awful song were pure gold. Hell, this whole episode had some of my favorite reaction faces so far, with everyone just not giving two craps. The odd pairing themselves both put up a good fight, while also having some legit wholesome interactions when they were talking to each other, which yes, I count this as a talk. And overall, I'll count this both as a fairly strong plot and really funny episode. Things are obviously changing up, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy more of the show's signature lewd fun. Thanks for watching, and as always, be sure to check out some of the other stuff that we have on this channel. Currently, we're working on an overview for Hirogar Sky, which will probably come out sometime in March before we do some other long form projects that might not be pretty cure. We'll see. We often play this stuff by ear. Look forward to it. And until then, though, for our phenomenon, my friend, and uh, Elizabeth Founders. Okay, then, everyone, bunker down!